Hello and welcome to this week's Seven Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, Ben talks about some news. Doug... Thanks, Doug. We've got some pretty great paleo news this week, starting off with the rediscovery of some historically important ichthyosaur casts. In a paper published recently, paleontologists Dean Lomax and Judy Masseri report on the relocation of two plaster casts of the first complete ichthyosaur skeleton to have been introduced to the scientific community. This specimen, likely collected by Mary Anning, was described in 1819 by the surgeon Sir Everard Holm, who gave it the name Proteosaurus, as he initially thought it represented a transitional stage between certain amphibians and lizards. However, this name was later replaced by Ichthyosaurus. The specimen eventually made its way to the collection of the Royal College of Surgeons in London, where unfortunately it was then later destroyed during a bombing raid in World War II. All that remained of this important specimen then was a drawing, that is, until Lomax and Masseri managed to locate two casts of the fossil, despite there being no record of casts having been made. One of these was found at the Peabody Museum in the US, and the other in the Berlin Natural History Museum. And together they helped to verify how accurate the published drawing of the specimen is, showing certain details that had been modified in the drawing. So this shows how important old casts kept in museums can be, and also hints at more casts potentially being kept in other places. Also in the news is a paper investigating the evolution of the sauropod neck. The paper explains how there's a gap in the fossil record of the transition between shorter-necked sauropodomorph dinosaurs and longer-necked ones living at the end of the Triassic period, meaning it's unclear if the neck vertebrae became elongated suddenly or gradually. Well, new material is described in this study, comprising a series of five neck vertebrae from in between these points in time, found in southern Brazil. The length of the vertebrae is said to be longer than older forms, but still relatively shorter than later ones, suggesting that the evolution of the long neck in sauropodomorphs was fairly gradual. The research finds that the shape of the skull, the anatomy of the teeth, and the proportions of the neck were the first bits of morphology to clearly differentiate more derived sauropods from earlier ones. So, a very interesting study. Finally, there's also been a report of a new site of exceptional preservation discovered in South Africa. Located in the southern Karoo Basin, this site preserves a mid-Permian lakeshore ecosystem, with all sorts of insect and plant fossils being preserved in amazing detail here. Although vertebrate fossils are well documented for the middle Permian in South Africa, the plant and invertebrate record was pretty much unknown, so this newly identified locality will be very important for reconstructing ecosystems at this time, as well as better understanding extinctions during the Permian. An absolutely amazing discovery then, I can't wait to see what else is discovered from here. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.